How does this happen? They have Paul Dini writing this stuff. So after buying Marvel, Disney couldn't continue Spectacular Spider-Man, and so replaced it with a more kid-friendly, less adult-themed Spidey series. What we got was Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man is the biggest case of false advertising ever. First of all, because it's nothing like the Ultimate Comics. Don't let that title fool you. But also because it's nothing like Spider-Man. So the premise behind Ultimate Spider-Man is that Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D. wants to recruit him and train him to become, quote, the Ultimate Spider-Man. He wants to teach him a lesson in responsibility. Now there are many reasons right off the bat why this makes zero sense. Spider-Man's whole origin is based around him learning responsibility. He learnt this when he used his powers for his own gain, fighting in wrestling matches and winning lots of money. When he had the chance to stop a criminal, who surprise surprise would later that night turn out to be Uncle Ben's killer, Peter let him pass. He was being irresponsible. His origin and him becoming Spider-Man was all about him taking responsibility for his powers and using them to save people, almost as if he's trying to make up for Uncle Ben's death. The phrase, with great power comes great responsibility, is the sum up of the origin and why he is Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man starts off after he's had his origin, so why would Nick Fury want to teach Spidey a lesson in responsibility? If he had to teach Spidey a lesson in responsibility, then he wouldn't even be Spider-Man yet. This doesn't make sense. So straight away the plot is questionable. Then you have the character of Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man. I'll say this now, I don't like this character. First of all, Peter Parker is way too confident. I don't see how this guy is considered a loser in school. He's more like the guy in your class who makes all the jokes, cracks people up, and often gets sent out by the teacher for being such a distraction. In the comics, Peter Parker is shy, awkward, and gets bullied. He's only meant to have this jokey attitude when he's Spider-Man, because that's when he can really be himself. In this show, there's no difference between the two. I fail to see the point of a secret identity when they're exactly the same as each other. He constantly cracks fourth wall jokes to the point of annoyance. I don't think I've seen one supposedly serious situation where he hasn't made one. Spider-Man doesn't break the fourth wall, and even if he did, why make him do it all the time? I can't imagine this character ever in a critical or serious situation, because the second it seems like there might be some kind of depth or emotion going on, the character will turn to the audience and will be shown some kind of comedic image going on in Spidey's head. It takes you out of the seriousness of his situation, and if Spider-Man jokes around not caring much, then why should I? The idea of Spider-Man being a relatable and enduring character is gone here. Spider-Man in the comics, while it was a superhero story, it was also a coming-of-age story. He's a teenager still growing up and learning his place in the world. Life gets him down a lot, and he's often faced with difficult decisions. The character in this show will just turn to us and shrug his shoulders. I also don't get a sense of responsibility from this guy at all. There's one episode where he and Nova keep trying to prove that they're better than each other, so Spider-Man brings Doctor Doom to S.H.I.E.L.D. to prove how he's more skilled than Nova is. Of course, this means that the whole of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets put in danger and Doctor Doom goes on a rampage. It's all played up for laughs, as if we're supposed to laugh at Spider-Man for being so silly. Yet to me, that's not funny. That's just Spider-Man being an incompetent idiot. Where's his sense of responsibility? Again, if he's going to crack fourth wall jokes and not focus on the problem at hand, then why should I care? Now, I don't think this is all down to the writing. I also think it's largely to do with Drake Bell's voice acting. This guy has no range. Peter Parker seems freakishly happy 24-7, and whenever there's a serious situation or it's meant to be a deep moment, which by the way happens rarely, then he delivers it with a dry tone. There's no middle ground. Every time the character talks, it feels like a build-up to an unfunny joke or visual gag, and I just want to punch him. Now, I can imagine Marvel and Disney decided that there should be comedy in this series. Okay, that's fine. The problem is that all that goes on is comedy, and it's never very funny. Spider-Man has always had a sense of humour in the comics, but he also knew when to shut up and take everything seriously. He uses his humour because every time Spider-Man confronts someone, he has a very good chance of getting injured, or worse, killed. The idea of taking the piss out of the people he fights is to distract himself from that danger. It also causes them to get frustrated and not really think properly, and it's also the simple fact that when you can laugh at someone, they're less scary. He also gets to be himself when he's Spider-Man. He'd never have this attitude when out of the costume, which is why I don't like the way he's portrayed when he's being Peter Parker in this series. But again, he had a sense of humour, but he never broke the fourth wall. I can't help but wonder if this was originally intended to be a Deadpool series. 
Spider-Man's humour is part of what makes him likeable, but this Spider-Man simply feels like he's trying too hard. As if he knows people are watching him, so he tries to be everyone's favourite character by trying to be really funny, and just ends up pissing everyone off. Then there's this whole idea of Spider-Man training and working with these other teenage heroes. That's when you see that this really isn't a Spider-Man series as much as it is Marvel's equivalent to the Teen Titans or Young Justice. I'd go for more Teen Titans as it's more comedic than serious, but then it doesn't even get the comedy right most of the time. Well, Disney said they wanted a more kid-friendly show and they succeeded. The problem is that just because it's a more kid-friendly show than Spectacular Spider-Man doesn't mean you have to dumb everything down to slapstick and visual gags with bright colours to get kids to laugh and clap their hands. It seems like studios don't give kids enough credit these days. It seems like everything needs to be dumbed down or there's too much attention to detail that could possibly seem the tiniest bit more aimed at a grown-up audience. You can have a kid-friendly show that still appeals to all ages. Spectacular Spider-Man is a prime example of this. Children aren't stupid. The thinking of this show seems to be that when you're a kid, you're not looking for deep character moments or good story. As long as there are pretty things on the screen, you'll be happy. This is the same thinking process as Batman and Robin. Because of this thinking, the show becomes a complete mess. With little to no character development, no sense of continuity, and no emotional core of the series. This is so far from the source material that I have to ask why this had to be a Spider-Man show. It's so far from everything that we know and love about Spidey that they could have gone with a number of other Marvel characters for this series. It seems like the only real reason it's Spider-Man is because his name is one of, if not the most popular name in Marvel, and slapping his name onto a series title will bring in tons of kids to watch it and lots and lots of money. Now I'm not going to pretend like everything in this series is bad. The animation is quite possibly the best thing going for this show. All the characters are drawn really well, and I love the way everything moves on screen. It blends CGI with the hand-drawn animation really well. The gadgets that Spider-Man uses all have their own unique design and look very futuristic. I especially like the work on the characters' faces. When I first saw Nick Fury's face in episode 1, I was really impressed. If someone was flicking through channels and came across this show, just from the animation you could buy that this was a show that took itself seriously. Unfortunately, that's not the case, but it has the same attention to detail like Young Justice does, and I love it. Of course, that fantastic animation and style unfortunately gets interrupted whenever there's one of Peter's visual gags, making all the artwork suddenly become more cartoony. The only reason that bothers me is because he doesn't do it, say, once per episode, he does it every minute. Earlier, I referenced Batman and Robin. You remember how it was basically one giant toy commercial? Well, I won't go too far saying that this show's only goal is to sell toys, but what other logic is there to giving Spider-Man a motorbike? Seriously? They call it the Spider-Cycle. Yeah, because that doesn't sound like anything I've heard before. It has a bunch of gadgets on it. It has a gun. It has tons of things on it that would be convenient for the episode. And then it has this weird thing on it that shoots a web line out from the front and back, and then the bike rides on that web line. What? Spider-Man wouldn't ever need a motorbike because he has his web swinging. The excuse for S.H.I.E.L.D. giving him this bike was that it would get him places faster than his web swinging could. But in episode 1, S.H.I.E.L.D. gave Spidey an upgraded web shooter. Why couldn't that be the gadget that would somehow make his web swinging faster? And really? A motorbike in New York traffic is faster than simply web swinging over New York's skyscrapers and traffic. I know I'm nitpicking a lot, but the point is, the only reason Spidey has a motorbike in this show is merchandise. There are other gadgets and things that are obviously made to be sold as toys as well, but this is the biggest case of toy advertising here. Then there's the other advertising, where the show tries to drop as many references to the Marvel Cinematic Universe as it possibly can. This is a Disney Marvel show, so it's trying to get all the kids to go see the Avengers and other upcoming movies involving those characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The voice acting I've covered a bit with Drake Bell already. I've nothing to add to that really. To sum up, I'm not impressed with him. I do, however, really like the choice to cast Clark Gregg in the role of Agent Coulson. The character is also animated to look like the actor. For those of you who don't know, Clark Gregg was the same actor who played Agent Coulson in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. While I guess you could call this another way of Disney trying to advertise the movies, I don't really care. Clark Gregg is a great actor and his delivery of the lines he's given actually made me chuckle a couple of times. Shy McBride as Nick Fury also does a fairly okay job. He's not in the spotlight 24-7 in the show, so I don't have too much to say. But from what I've seen, he does a good Nick Fury. I remember reading in an article online that J.K. Simmons would reprise his role as J. Jonah Jameson, and I was on cloud 9 for about 4 seconds until I reread the sentence and realised that it said he would be reprising his role in Ultimate Spider-Man, not the Amazing Spider-Man movie. Oh well. Still, it's great that he came back to do the character. I absolutely loved him in the Raimi films. But then it seems like they only had him in for one day of recording. 
He has this speech that plays on a digital billboard screen that gets repeated in lots of episodes. I haven't seen every single episode, but from what I've seen, I haven't seen him say anything else. I have a feeling that the show can't afford him, and so they've put the only recording they have of him on a loop. Stan Lee as Stan the Janitor is great. I can't help but laugh whenever Stan makes a cameo in some shape or form. The character looks like him, acts like him. I mean, sure, he's only ever in it once every four or five episodes, but he, like Clark Gregg, delivers his lines with great comedic timing. For a while, I couldn't help but wonder why this show was so bad for a Spider-Man TV series. I mean, they have Paul Dini, one of the masters behind Batman the Animated Series, and Brian Michael Bendis, the writer behind the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, which I read and absolutely loved which by the way has nothing to do with this show. So I was really confused as to why this show was getting so much stuff wrong. This was until I saw an episode of Grace Randolph's Think About the Ink comic book channel where she interviewed the guys at Man of Action Studios, the people who created the show. When Grace asked them what their thoughts were on the fact that Ultimate Spider-Man seems to be getting a lot of negative response, one of them said, geez, a kid's show that some adults don't like? How weird. Obviously being sarcastic. The rest of them come out with some bullshit about how all they've had is positive response, despite the fact that Grace said that it's a very controversial show. And then they all start making fun of the people on the internet, saying, quote, We don't get any negative response, only on the internet. They live there, they breathe there, ha 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 ha, etc etc. Now aside from the fact that these guys look like complete and utter douchebags wearing sunglasses indoors and chewing gum, this showed me that the show clearly knows that Spider-Man's fanbase largely doesn't like it, and their excuse is, the show is clearly for kids, so stop complaining. Let me tell you something, Spider-Man was never meant for kids. Perhaps older kids, sure, but it was much more aimed at a teenage and adult audience. The people behind this seem to look at Spider-Man and think, it's a superhero, which means it's for kids. By the way, Think About the Ink is a great channel for any comic book fan, and I suggest you check it out. I'll post a link at the end of this review. I'd like to go back to my previous comment, if this is what they think kids like, then they're not giving them enough credit. Pixar films are for kids, but they have substance and character arcs. Not every kid has ADHD or trouble following episodic adventures. Saying that the show is for kids and that's why there's never much character development or continuity between episodes is a straightforward cop-out. I know it sounds harsh, but it really bothers me that we could have come so far with the great serious animated shows like Spectacular Spider-Man and Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and then Ultimate Spider-Man comes along and takes us back to that idea of animated shows being only meant for kids. This show was running during the same time as Earth's Mightiest Heroes was. Now there was a problem here because both of these shows had S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers characters in them. These two shows were not set in the same universe or continuity. One had to go. So which one did they cancel? Go on, take a guess. That's right, they got rid of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, another show that really nailed down the heart of these characters and gave us some great adventures and character development. So now that that show has been canned, Disney and Marvel are now working on a new Avengers show called Avengers Assemble, I believe set in the same universe as Ultimate Spider-Man. I am not looking forward to that series. I just don't understand the thought process behind all this. I have to say, the way that Spider-Man has gone with Disney is not looking great. Once I was fine with Sony keeping Spidey's film rights, until I saw Amazing Spider-Man. I have to say that I was a bit disappointed with that film. Then you see what Disney are doing with Spidey's TV rights, and the character is just getting messed about by studios. It would have been perfect if it were the other way around, if Sony kept Spider-Man's TV rights, and then Spectacular Spider-Man could have continued. And if Disney owned Spidey's film rights, then we could have had Spidey in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which I actually think Disney and Marvel have handled brilliantly. To sum up, I'm going to say that the Ultimate Spider-Man TV series is a mixed bag. While it has great animation and reasonably okay voice acting, it gets almost everything else wrong. The show spends all its time trying to slap you in the face with visual gags and ridiculous sound effects to get you to laugh, and the most it has got out of me is a quiet chuckle. Trying to sit through one episode is a hard thing to do. The show in general just irritates me. I can't imagine many Spidey fans liking this show, but if some do, then I'm happy that it doesn't depress them like it does me. With little to no respect for the source material, hardly any character development, dumbed down stories and a very unlikable protagonist, Ultimate Spider-Man proceeds to further change the character from being a relatable, enduring character that we all know and love, but succeeds in making kids look like idiots. With this Spider-Man, with great power comes no responsibility.